You're listening to Homeschool Unrefined. I'm Marin, And I'm Angela. Let's encourage each other, laugh, and get real about homeschool. Welcome to the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. You've got episode 86, Where Nature Inspires Us, with Greta Eskridge. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Homeschool Unrefined. We are so happy you're here. If you're new, welcome. Um, And if you've been around a while, hello again. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to say a special hello and thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you are interested in getting an extra episode per month, and um, you can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. Yes. And Angela, we haven't talked much about Audible or Audible listens lately. No, we can haven't. We, can we get into that? Just a little bit. Yeah, let's yeah, do okay. it. All right. So what are you listening to on, on Audible or what have you been listening to? Okay. So I didn't tell anybody about this. I don't even think I told you. Maybe mm-hmm. I did. Everything is Horrible and Wonderful by Stephanie Whittles Wax. Wow. Nope. Never heard of it. Okay. So um, it's a memoir. Okay. Her brother, Harris Whittles, was on, he's a writer on Parks and Rec. Oh, yes. You did tell me about this. I did tell you about this because mm-hmm. I know you love Parks and Rec. Mm-hmm. Okay. Love it. And he died of a heroin overdose. Mm-hmm. So it kind of sounds like, why would you want to read a book about that? Yeah. Because it's about grief. Yeah. But it's yeah. also, like the title says, everything is horrible and wonderful. It's about good, beautiful things mixed with grief. And it's just, she's a great writer. It's a beautiful story. I listened. She read it. Yes. On Audible, which I love those oh, memoir read by the author. Too. I know. And it was such it was such a great book. So that that's my favorite of late. Oh, that's so yeah. great. Yeah. How about you? Um I just I just finished the Parker Posey memoir. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's called You're on an Airplane, a okay. self mythologizing memoir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the whole time I was listening to it, I was thinking are these real stories or is this, this is self mythologizing. So what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? But it's so Parker Posey. I think it's just who she is. She is yeah. very funny and very, yet yeah, very like straight faced kind of, yeah, you know, serious face, but very funny. Yeah. Underlying funny things. So it was just a lot of rambling stories. Okay. They didn't, they didn't always go anywhere. <laughs> 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 and I had, I found myself getting lost a lot. I'd have to like rewind and be like, what are we, but, but I have to tell you, like, even with all that, it was entertaining. Yeah. It was, it was a great read. I mean, I was, I loved it. <laughs> I so loved it. Re- remind me and everybody else how we would know Parker Posey. So I found, I, I learned of Parker Posey when I started watching the mockumentary shows from the 1990s. Oh, yeah. Like Waiting for Guffman, <laughs> Best in Show. Yeah. Those type of things. So, yeah. And yeah. she was also, before that, though, she wasn't like dazed and confused. Okay. And some other like kind of indie movies, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. She's always but been. But she's funny. Movies. She's a comedian. She's very funny. And, but also just, you know, deadpan face. Yeah. <laughs> Which I just love. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, and my kids are listening um my kids are listening to Roll Doll as usual. You know, we went to go see the the um the Winnie the Pooh movie. What is that called? Oh, Christopher Robin. Chris- yeah. Yes, we went to go see that. And after that, I was inspired to pull out my Audible of Winnie the Pooh and we listened to the, some of those stories. Like oh, yeah. cuz they're, they're short stories. Each chapter is like a little short story. Right. And they're good they listen to it i know which i i thought my kids were done listening to winnie the pooh oh no i read no. it aloud to my kids last year i read aloud house of pooh corner last so year so great and we were all into it <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all into it. <laughs> yeah I, I just i love have you seen the movie no but you should probably go see it i probably will <laughs> it's on my list <laughs> since we're gonna be seeing lots of movies this year <laughs> yeah that's great. Yeah. So if you are interested in getting a free trial membership at Audible, a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook, you can go to audibletrial.com slash homeschool unrefined. Yeah. So Angela, what did you do this weekend? Okay. So this weekend, I wanted to tell everybody it was our anniversary. Yes. And um, we typically, I hate to say that we don't celebrate our anniversary, um, but, we don't ever yeah. like, we don't, not ever, we rarely take any trips right? or like, like you don't plan make a, big... a, we don't make a big deal of it. Mm-hmm. Usually we like go out to dinner or something. Sure. 
But this year, we decided to do something kind of big. Yeah. For us. Um, and so we went up to the North Shore in Minnesota. Yes. And Lake it was amazing. It, Lake, Lake Superior. Yes. It was amazing. Because we stayed at this place um, that has, like, guided adventures. Mm. Kind of. And I'm putting in quotes for free. They're not. I mean, it's included with yeah. your <laughs> stay. <Sure. laughs> yeah. But there's like many choices throughout the day. I mean, there's probably like, well, five to eight different choices of things oh, you can wow. do throughout the day. And I loved it because we went canoeing on nice. a river. Yeah. Um, and it was so beautiful. Yeah. And what I loved about it is if I wanted to go canoeing at the North Shore, I'd have to find a canoe, <laughs> find the best spot. I know. Figure out uh, how to get back. Figure out how I'm going to get there. How mm-hmm. am I going to go there and back? What if the current's really strong? I don't know how this works. Um, And so this, like, we had a guide who just drove us to the spot. There's canoes there. You know, he took us up the river and back. And it was so gorgeous. And he yeah. knew the best spot to go. Yeah. So I loved that so much. And um, we did a couple other really exciting kind of adventure things like that. You know, I we went hiking. We went hiking. On Instagram. We we did a ropes course. Yes. Yeah. If you, fo- if you follow me on Instagram, you saw all this. <laughs> and you really, I mean, whenever I see you up high, I'm just amazed. Cause you, oh, yeah. You have a, f- aren't you, can, you have a fear of heights, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And, yeah. And you're you acting, just, you're you acting like you those. don't know that. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, aren't not, you? <laughs> yeah. Try not to make it a big deal. <laughs> aren't you deathly afraid of heights? Yes. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Didn't you cry last time? We okay. Didn't you start falling <laughs> when we went? What did we do? Ziplining. <laughs> Ziplining. Yes, I started crying. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just uh, so impressed with you. You do yeah. things that you really attack your fears. I don't. I don't know really why are. I do this because. So there was this thing you could sign up for, go on this ropes course, which actually, I had been there in seventh grade. Because, like, a lot of school groups go to this place. And mm-hmm. I went in seventh grade and we did the ropes course. So this is, like, 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got up to the, the first one and I was like, nope. And I, <laughs> I walked back down. Not doing and I watched all my classmates. Oh. Like, a hundred of them do oh, the thing. Oh, man. And I was like, so nope, tough. not doing it. And oh. uh, I that's always kind of stuck with me. So yeah. when I saw it was an option to go do this ropes course, I was like, I could redeem myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, so. Not that you have to. Jeremy okay. did not, No, I know. Jeremy did not want to because he's also afraid of heights. Mm. But he was doing it for me. And we get there. I did not know about Jeremy. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. We get there and he's like, we're both so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe and I was do. like, I'm sorry. I should have done this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But we cannot back out now. <laughs> we're with a group of people yeah. listening to the instructions so um anyway he did it first and it was so hard to watch him because it was just from the ground it looks terrifying but then when I did it it actually wasn't that bad okay it good. actually was good. not that bad I was like oh I mean I was scared but I also was it was doable and wow. I was just really proud of myself go. for doing it yeah <laughs> proud but of you. what I was gonna say is one thing I realized, and I've realized this before, but I forgot it. So it's always good. You know, you keep learning the same lessons over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Which is exactly. like for Jeremy and I, we need to get out and do new things together. Yeah. Like we need to experience something new together. Like going yeah. on this canoe trip yeah. or like doing the ropes course or whatever it was or just mm-hmm. hiking in a new spot. Yeah. We need to experience those new things together. And you are so good at that. You and Sean are so good at that. <laughs> I don't want to say I told you so, but. <laughs> I know. I, I know so, you did. I'm so glad you learned that. <laughs> no, it's good. It, you're right, though. And it, it does take several times. I mean, you know, you have to learn the lesson several times in order for it to stick. I mean, it's not it's not something you're just going to be like, oh, yeah, we should just go and do fun things all the time. Well, we have responsibilities and bills to pay and we don't have like limited you know, time and money and energy. And, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I'm so glad like there comes to a point where you're like, oh, my goodness, this has to be a priority. It does. You're right. I'm so glad we did it because it just I don't know. It brought that home for me. Like yeah. we have to and we have to probably schedule this. Yes. Otherwise, it won't happen. Yep. And we have to say it's important, and we have to keep finding those new and different things to do. Right, right, right. Yeah. So. I'm so glad. 
All right. We are so excited to have our very special guest on today, Greta Eskridge. She is a blogger, um, an Instagram. I don't know. How, what do you call them? Instagram blogger. She's oh, an yeah. Instagram she blogger. She writes a lot on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And her Instagram stories are just amazing and inspiring. Um, she does a homeschool podcast with some of her friends, and I love listening to them. And um, she's just an all around inspiring person. Yeah, she has this um, excitement and energy and love of her family mm-hmm. and nature. And it just comes through in her, her words and her pictures. And I think she was your, her Instagram was your loving this week way I, back at the beginning. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because watching her stories when she takes her kids in nature really inspires us to want to do that more. Exactly. Yeah. So, and yeah, just her love and wonder for the world, I think, is just is overflows. So right. we loved having this conversation. So I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Greta. Hi. Welcome to Homeschool Unrefined. We are so glad to have you. Thank you. I am really glad to be here. Yeah. Could you start by telling us and our listeners a little bit about yourself and your family and your hobbies or things like that? Okay, well, uh, I'm Greta Eskridge, and I am married to Aaron Eskridge. We've been married. We just had our 20th anniversary this summer. Oh, congratulations. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you. And we have four kids, ages, so let's see, they all had birthdays. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're 14, 12, 10, and 7. Oh, all my goodness. Okay. Three boys and one girl. Yep. And wow. um, we live in Southern California. I've lived here my whole life, and um, we have been homeschooling from the time my kids basically were born, and Mm. I don't see us stopping in the foreseeable future, (laughs) because I love it. Oh, that's so great. And um, you have done lots of things. I know you've done a blog. Yes. Um, And you like to write. I do. I, I I. I've been writing uh, on a blog, actually, various blogs, because I mm-hmm. start one, and then I'll do it for a while, and then I'll be like, oh, I need to start over with a fresh new look, <laughs> and I've been doing it for 10 years, actually. I started oh, wow. when my yeah, my daughter, who's my third, she was born, and um, that that was in the era of scrapbooking. Remember scrapbooking? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and um, so there I was with a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a newborn, and oh, I yeah. said, I will never scrapbook again. Mm-hmm. That <laughs> part of my life is now done. Yes. Cool. But <laughs> how, yeah, because I mean, who has time to like right. cut out pictures and tape cute, you know, know. stickers and things? I, I didn't, I, it was never going to happen. So, but I wanted to be able to, to record our days and, and my life as a mom with little kids, and I wanted to remember it all. So, um, I read, I had never even heard of a blog, but I read an article in Bon Appetit by an author that I liked. And at the bottom of her article, it said, she blogs at blah, 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 whatever her Mm -hmm. blog was. And I was like, what's a blog? So so I looked and I was like, like the heavens open. I thought, I can do this. This is my new scrapbook. And I just started blogging. And at first it was just my mom and my sister who read. I don't even think my husband read anything that I wrote. (laughs) And, um, And then, you know, I just did it because I loved writing and I loved capturing our our days in our life and um it's just grown from there that is so awesome I love that you just took hold of that and now you're you are on Instagram a lot too and I feel like I know that's not that's not well you do some writing on Instagram you do write on Instagram (laughs) also Um, I mean I just love I love your stories too because it's kind of like you know it's a video vlog almost Blog. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I might be the only person who ever um, writes to the maximum number of characters on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I literally have people say to me, wait, there's a limit of how much you can write? I'm like, oh, yes, there <laughs> is. <laughs> and I know it. <laughs> well, I think so that's I, great. a lot of people are there. That's where a lot of people are reading things now, too. So, Right. Yeah. So I write a lot on Instagram. And Mm -hmm. then when I want to write even more, I blog still. 
on okay, um, my website is Greta Eskridge.com and, and I have a blog there. So I write longer pieces there, but I do write a lot on Instagram um, because I think a lot of people, like you said, that's where they are. And then I yes. share stories on Instagram where I'm, that's like totally the unfiltered Greta and um, it's a lot of fun <laughs> and probably yeah. kind of silly. <laughs> I think that is so great. I love that you have the unfiltered grub. We need yeah. that. We need, we need people to be unfiltered. Yeah, hopefully in the best way. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, it's inspiring. So for sure. We, uh, on our podcast, we love talking about personalities mm. and personality frameworks. Do you know any of your personality types? I do. I just, in the last couple of years, learned about, you know, Enneagram and Myers-Briggs and I, I don't know a lot about either one but I, okay. I'm learning more and I find them fascinating yeah. so um my Enneagram number I don't even know if I'm saying it right is it Enneagram yep. yes. it is Whew, thank goodness um <laughs> I didn't want to out myself fully of how little I know. <laughs> um but I'm a seven and yep. um my Myers-Briggs I don't have it memorized, but I wrote it down so I could share it with you. It's um, extroverted, of course. So E N S P. So um, I'm a big feeler. (laughs) All All the feelings. All the fun, yep. all the adventure. Oh, totally. Yep. Okay, so Greta, I am exactly the same. I am ENFP <laughs> oh, at a seven. That and is so awesome. I feel you. I do. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and you love the adventures. And yes. All the fun times your family yep. can possibly have. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the downside I find is that um, all the nitty gritty practical details are not my strength totally (laughs) right because that's just not as much fun it's not as much fun exactly (laughs) Uh, but you know what it's okay though and I you know I have to it's I have to have this self-talk every day to myself that it's okay that I'm not strong at all of those things it's okay we need all kinds of people to make the world go round Yes, exactly. And my kids will be most uh, blessed when I am who I am and not trying to be someone else. Because when I try to be someone else, I'm really crap. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, am, I am not yeah. fun to be around. So it's better if I'm just, you know, not good at something. <laughs> I agree. You, you guys, your kids are going to grow up with fun moms, really fun, <laughs> adventurous moms. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> I, w- I sometimes wish I were, you know. More fun. <laughs> but I too have to be myself. So. Yeah. No, you are. My kids probably sometimes wish I would be more organized yes. or, yeah. you know, yeah. less because... fly by the seat of our pants. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, yes. Mine too. My husband probably would too. <laughs> I was yeah. the same thing. I think my husband would love it if I were a little bit more organized, but. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. So, speaking of adventure, Greta. Um, one thing, one reason we were drawn to you is because you just have this love and enthusiasm for nature. And that's why we wanted to have you on the podcast because we've been talking about nature all summer. We've read this book, how to raise a wild child. And so, um, we're just wondering if you could tell us like what, how did that develop for you? Were there experiences or people in your life who, um, kind of instilled that love in you? Um, Yeah. I have loved nature since I, for really as long as I can remember from the time I was a little girl. And, um, I didn't have, I didn't grow up going backpacking or on incredible, you know, trips through the Swiss Alps. We never even, I didn't even leave the, the, um, country until I was 16 years old. And I, my dad and I went on a trip to India and that was my first time flying on an airplane and um, prior to that, I, I was in California and never even mm-hmm. went out of the state. Wow. So yep. I didn't grow up like in my early childhood years going to all these amazing natural destinations. <laughs> but I think the, that there were two things that really grew a love of nature in me. One, 
even though I grew up in Southern California, we lived in a small rural town and, mm-hmm. um, I had a huge backyard with, uh, avocado grove all oh, around us. My goodness. <laughs> so oh my goodness. We, we climbed in the avocado trees and played in the avocado grove and there were empty fields full of, you know, California poppies every spring. And I just spent as much time outside as I could. And then I read a lot of books that were steeped in nature. And those mm. two things just filled me up with a love and a longing for nature and a love and a longing for adventure. Yeah. And mm. so that's that's really where it all started. And it's just grown since then. I, I love this for so many reasons. Um, but I think because of our, you know, Instagram world that we're in, we do mm-hmm. see people going to all the amazing places all the time. Right. And mm-hmm. that is, it's, I have major FOMO with that. I mean, yeah. you know, especially when it's on the top of a mountain or something and I just, I want to be there. And it's so good to hear that, like, we are not stunting the growth of our children's, you know, na- love of nature by keep, keep keeping them in our backyard, you know? Right. There's right. so much right there. There is. I, we had, we were, I was homeschooled and mm-hmm. therefore we were a single income family. Mm-hmm. My dad was gone a lot working yeah. to support us. And oftentimes we didn't even have a car cause we had one car that he took mm-hmm. to work. And so yeah. we couldn't go out anywhere. In addition, my mom had a lot of um, physical difficult difficulties with her back and, um, mm-hmm. So she was never physically able to take us hiking or, Mm. you know, even like on a nature walk that plus my mom loves to be home. Like she and I are polar opposites. She loves to be home. She (laughs) hates to be dirty. Like adventure (laughs) to her is horrible. So, so it just, that, that was the world that I grew up in. But what she did give me, because we were limited with, the ability to go out places beyond our, our backyard and, Mm -hmm. you know, the empty fields next door was she gave me books. Like she loved to read and she introduced me to books that she loved books like the yearling and where the red fern grows that Mm. are seeped in nature. And that just, it, it fed the desire that I had and it made it grow. Uh, That is so great. And books have the power to do that. They really do. Wonderful, and I loved I I loved the uh, the podcast that you were on the Read Aloud Revival podcast where you talked mm. about the book your favorite books about nature, yes. right? Oh. Yes, yeah, that was that was so fun because I hadn't really reflected that mm-hmm. much about where my love of nature came from, and and when I was preparing for that episode, I realized like, oh wow, this mm-hmm. this is where it really grew Aww. to this passion. Yep. And then to see now that I get to do it with my kids because I don't have the same limitations that mm. were in existence when I was a kid. Uh, I don't have the physical limitations that my mom had. I love adventure. I don't mind getting dirty. I'm not afraid of mountain lions or right. rattlesnakes. Right. So I'll take <laughs> my kids on a trail and, you know, we are blessed to have two cars. And if yes. we don't, my husband rides his bike to work. Currently, his yeah. car is broken in our driveway. <laughs> He's riding his bike to work. But, yeah. you know, those limitations don't exist. Yeah. There are limitations. I still haven't taken my kids to the Swiss Alps. But um, mm-hmm. we, we can adventure where we live. And yes. we definitely do. Yeah. yeah. And is... that, that feels like a lot of freedom. Yes. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a dream come true. Oh, I mean, yeah. really, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm... Every time I'm, just, I'm glad you guys um, can't see that I'm about to cry, but oh. <laughs> honestly, every time I take my kids out and we're out hiking or something, I just, I'm so overwhelmed with the fact that I am living my childhood dreams, you know, yeah. like oh. with them. And it's even better than if I would have done it then oh. that I get to yeah. do it now. Right. right. Oh gosh, that's so good. So when you, because you love being in nature and you this you know you have this freedom now is is that one of the main reasons why you wanted to homeschool or I know you you were homeschooled as a child too so I'm just wondering was nature a factor in that decision 
for you? Not, not initially. Mm-hmm. Initially, I just wanted to homeschool my kids because when I was homeschooled, I loved it. Yeah. And then, then I taught public high school for five years, and okay. I loved that too because I yeah. love teaching and I love my students. But I felt the limitations of being in a classroom and trying to meet mm. all the needs of all my oh, students. Gosh. I mean, yeah. I had like 150 students and, yeah. and it was, I just thought I can't, I can't meet all their needs. And, and so if I have four students or however many kids God right. gives me, I can meet their needs. And yeah, so right. that's initially why I chose homeschooling. But then with in short, in a short period of time, um, and the way that we decided to homeschool nature became a central element of our schooling. And that was mm-hmm. just an unexpected gift of God knowing my heart's desire from the time I was a kid and then bringing it into play to me as an adult. Yes. Uh, so what I, Angela and I were both teachers also. Oh, yep. okay. I didn't yep. realize yep. that. Yep. I taught elementary school and Angela taught middle school. Yep. Yeah. Science. And so we kind of, I mean, we can, we definitely felt that same way for sure. Uh, so when you decided to homeschool, what kind of, what kind of a homeschool environment were you, were you hoping for? Um, okay. So it's kind of a funny story. Um, mm-hmm. I initially totally thought I would be a classical mm-hmm. education mm-hmm. style person. Um, okay. I really thought the, um, I loved the structure of it, and I'm going to be perfectly honest here. I really loved how smart it would make my kids look, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and me. Like I, sure, I sure. as a, as a former homeschooler, um, there's always this element of I need to prove that this works, and wow. and um, I, I, I don't know if I really thought it through that <laughs> honestly yeah. at the time, but. I think I wanted to prove not only did it work for me, but it works. Homeschooling works so well. It's going to work with my kids. And if my kids are in like second grade and they're speaking Latin and they know, you know, 50 states and capitals, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. look like a rock star. Right. right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And they are too. So, um, you know, that, that was part of why I, I classical, it just sounded amazing. And, mm-hmm. um, and I think, it definitely has amazing aspects to it that I really admire. But once Mm -hmm. my kid, my oldest got a little older and we are ready to start thinking about school. And I honestly assessed who he was as a learner and who I was as a teacher. I realized that the structure (laughs) of classical education (laughs) was like not going to work for either one of us. And, and um, that was terrifying but then it was really exciting because I got to discover that the kind of education I had actually been longing for from the time I was a kid was mm. what I was going to be able to offer to my oh. kids. And, and so I took a different approach. I started studying Charlotte Mason, and I really chose a style that is a kind of a mixture of her philosophies, heavily seeped in literature and nature study, and then just my own because I love to make up almost all of my own curriculum. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so great. Greta, this is so inspiring because um, you are showing us, and we need to hear it more and more, that the more we are ourselves, the better this is going to go for everybody. Our kids need us to be who we really are. And when we try to do something different or be someone different, it, it doesn't work. And so you are coming like fully alive to your children when you are showing them your loves, which is like books and nature and Mm -hmm. adventure and things like that. And so I think that is such a good reminder for us. Thank you. I just, I just felt like, like I said, this part of me that wanted that kind of education from the time I was a kid and my Mm -hmm. mom homeschooled us in a time when there was no internet there was limited resources it was like bob jones and abeka were your only choices Mm -hmm. and um (laughs) and so she didn't have access to all of the information that i do now and and as i looked at myself as a learner as a child i saw that those things i was hungry for as a kid i could still 
feed, feed my own heart and then mm. and mind and my own children's heart and mind. And that just, that was just incredibly freeing. Just like you said, it's incredible to be ourselves as we educate our kids. Right. Yeah. That's so good. Um, so why do you think nature is so good for us? What is it about it and why is it essential for all of us, including our kids? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I feel like you're opening up a can of worms here. <laughs> Meaning kind of I have a, a lot of Kind opinions. of a big question. I have a lot of opinions. Um, oh, okay, okay yeah. I'm going to start with a quote. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the book Last Child in the Woods by Richard mm-hmm. Lewis. Yes. Yes. And that's one of my favorite books. And um, I think that he has such incredible wisdom to offer about why time in nature is really important for our kids. And um, one of his quotes is, time in nature is not leisure time. It's an essential investment in our children's health and also, by the way, in our own. Mm. And I love that quote because he he's talking about being out in nature in a, in a way that's just uh, for the experience. We don't have to write an essay about it. We don't have to have yeah. any measure, measurable data. We don't have to have a test. We yeah. can. We just need to be out there because it it affects our health. So our our children's emotional health, their physical health, their spiritual health, their mm-hmm. mental health, every part of who they are is impacted. And then ultimately, academically, they'll be impacted as well because of what nature offers them. Yes. Yeah. That is so good. And I have to remember this every time we, we have, we have a group of, you know, families who go out into nature every week too, just like you. And, um, I have to remember every time to kind of keep my hands off the situation and just let them be in nature and just be, just be there, Uh breathe it in and enjoy it. Um, because I, um, because I love nature so much, I want them to do all the things that I think are great in nature. <laughs> and uh, it just doesn't always, you know, it just does not work that way. They need to take it in the way they need to take it in. And that is the best thing for them. So, right. Sometimes they just want to build a fort yes. out of sticks yeah. and logs right. and, and, you know, yeah. palm fronds or whatever. And to us, we think we, we can be tempted to think that is, a waste of time. But right, right. when we stop and look back at all that they're learning in the yeah. moment, they're, you know, they're learning teamwork, they're learning communication skills, they're learning how to build something out of nothing. They're, they're using engineering. Like hmm. there's so yeah. many different things that yeah. are going on in a completely unstructured and really like a natural way. Yeah. That's incredible learning experience. But again, it's not something that we can measure. But right. all learning doesn't have to be measured. And that is something sure. I think that is so important for us homeschooling moms to remember because we live in a world that says the only learning that matters is learning that can be measured. And right. that's just not true. I'm sure one of the reasons why we all probably started homeschooling or decided this, it had to have been a factor for so many people because we don't need to do all that documentation of every single thing, you know, and it just kills learning for so mm-hmm. much of us. And to be able to, you know, kind of be free of that and just, just trust that your kids are going to learn um, in a natural setting because that's what we were born to do. Right. Yeah. I think another reason I love being out in nature and and making learning in nature a part of what we do is because I think nature, it it invites us to be more curious so we have to we have to slow down and observe because if we want to find that amazing bug or catch the snake or you know see the wildflowers we have to slow down and we have to be curious and then it invites us to learn even more because it it asks it invites us to wonder we're like well why you know why does that bug live here or why does yeah. um why how can I tell the difference between this kind of snake and that kind of snake? Right. So it, it invites curiosity and it invites mm. us to learn even more. We want to go home and learn right. more. And, yeah. and that's just the, that's what you want for your yes. kids. Yeah. 
you want them to wonder, you want them to be curious, you want them to be lifelong learners. And I think nature is one of the ideal places to give that gift of being a lifelong learner to your kids. Oh, totally. And all in nature always gives you great answers. <laughs> you know, you mm-hmm. ask, you ask questions and the answers are always so amazing. <laughs> so much more than you ever expected. Yes, exactly. So do your kids love being in nature as much as you do? And if they do, how did you get them? We, because I know a lot of our listen listeners have asked us, how do we get our kids out into nature <laughs> and love it? Okay. So I have to give one caveat that, that I live in Southern California. So I have kind of, um, I'm really very fortunate in our yeah. natural environment. One, we have hardly any bugs. I know a lot of oh you live in places <laughs> yeah. where you have to deal with mosquitoes, oh, like so many crazy, mosquitoes. ticks, triggers. We don't even have triggers here. Um, I don't know if you guys have triggers where you live, but I experienced some yep. um, one summer in Florida and I was yep. like, these are the worst things in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, we have them. You know, I've been outside in nature for 40 years and have had a tick on me one one time and it had, it was tiny, hadn't even gotten on. I flicked it off. So we just don't have to deal with bugs and (laughs) our, we have very limited extreme weather. I mean, there's no snow. Um, there's, you know, it's, so I'm really fortunate and I I just want to make sure people understand that when I'm here saying, Oh, nature, we love to be in nature. It's great (laughs) because, um, it's pretty easy to be in nature where I live. Yeah. And so I just really want everybody to understand that so that they're not listening to me thinking, well, I'm a complete failure because being, being out in nature isn't my favorite. Well, right. if I had yeah. to deal with mosquitoes all the time, it wouldn't be my favorite either. Right. So, um, that has to be clarified that, <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that it's, it's easier for me. And right. so, but even so there are some things we have to deal with for the, you know, I live in Southern California, close to Los Angeles. So we have to deal with driving to nature. It's not in my backyard backyard. I live close to the beach. So the tide pools are easily accessible. But, um, if I want to go to the mountains or the desert, or even just a hike in the foothills, it's going to be our nature group will often drive an hour to two hours for a good hike. Oh, Wow. wow. One way. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So it's because a, it's a huge event. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's just our norm. Like we know right. how to schedule it. Okay. Traffic's going to be bad. We're going to go at this time. Okay. We're going to, we're going to, if we're going to a far destination, we know we're going to deal with rush hour traffic yes. on the way home. We'll stay late. So, yeah. and, you know, get dinner and then drive home after dark because sure. that's just our reality. Yeah, so, that, that's so funny because our our nature group just this week decided to change where we were going to meet because of road construction. We were like, we're not driving that far. It's not because it, it would have taken us like a half an hour. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and then we were like, well, we can just go ten minutes away. It's right yeah. there. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we don't have. I mean, there's a park ten minutes away, but yeah, that's <laughs> like not you know right. we're not going yeah. hiking yeah. on a trail. No. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there are limitations. They're just different. Exactly. Um, exactly. But I think the biggest thing is that, that I've done to help my kids love nature is to just um, say, despite the limitations, we're doing it anyways, and we're going to do it regularly, no matter mm-hmm. what. So it is a commitment that I've made, just like people are committed to their kids' sports teams, or, mm. you know, we're committed to eating healthy or whatever your commitment is. I have made a commitment to get my kids out in nature. And um, I think that's the biggest and first step to get them to love it is you actually have to be there and you have to do it again and again, and that will help them grow a love for it. Yeah. Right. When they can expect it every week. Right. And And it, it becomes less um, difficult and less scary and more familiar and then more fun. Yeah. And you're going with friends. Yes. So that's that got to be a draw. Yes. That was going to be my second thing is to include friends as part of the equation mm-hmm. because um, everything's more fun with friends yes. for them and for us. So I, <laughs> I, I think that 
going weekly with our nature group has been a tremendously important part of the, of the success because they look forward to exploring with their friends and walking on a trail side by side with your buddies is Mm. just, that's just a gift to give to them. And, and again, I, I always think about parenting and educating in the long term. So I think what habits can I help my kids develop now that will see them through their whole life? And if I can give them now as children, the um, opportunity and the, the love of spending time talking to a friend while being out in nature, yeah. that's mm. a gift that will last them their whole life. Oh, it's so huge. For sure. And, and I want to cultivate that because I think that's something that will serve them well their whole life. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, they can have lots of success in this world. And, and, you know, if you don't have like a pressure valve, <laughs> it can all just go away. Right. So we all need that. We all need the thing that we love to do. And right. We need to figure out how to do it. Right. Um, a couple other things that I, that I've done, I think, um, that have helped my kids is to build their endurance. I didn't start with really long, difficult hot, um, hikes in the heat of summer when they were five. Like yeah. when we started our kid, my oldest was five. I had a five-year-old, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And when we started, we just went to nature centers mm-hmm. because, Uh, the trails were marked and it was a a small environment. It still felt wild enough that our, that our kids felt like they were out in the wild, but it felt safe enough for us to be doing with our small kids and, um, success breeds success. Mm -hmm. So as they were successfully able to complete small trails, we could grow and, Mm -hmm we could do more, not just the kids could do more, but we moms were like, Hey, we can yeah. do yeah. more. Like, <laughs> we can yeah. do this. you know, and these, a few years later, we've got, you know, babies strapped to us and we're hiking like five miles to a waterfall <laughs> right. yeah. with wow. all these little kids that have just been doing it enough to see they could do it. And, you know, it was kind of amazing, but that's not where we started. We had to build up to that point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it, that is a really good point. Going to a nature center can be your success. Just go there. Right. Yeah, exactly. You have to start, you just have to be realistic about where you're at Mm -hmm. and, and not, and not look at the, like you said earlier, the pictures of the people on the mountaintop and think, well, (laughs) if I'm not climbing the mountain, it's not worthwhile, but it is worthwhile you yeah. have to start where you are and then you can grow. The last thing I pack, like we are going on like a 40 day journey yeah. and it's, <laughs> you know, a two mile hike, but every, it make it can make or break I your, know. your hike. <laughs> and if you don't have good snacks, then, then it's doomed. So my kids each have their own backpack where they pack Mm. their own, they carry their own water and they pack their own snacks. Um, Mm -hmm. And then in my backpack, I have a small cooler bag where I have lunch and more snacks because we're always going to run out and (laughs) extra water. So I just feel like having the preparation and not just like good snacks as far as like being healthy and making sure they have good energy for the trail. That's important. And I pack those snacks, but we also, um, always have like something that's going to be a treat, like, you know, beef jerky or, um, a lollipop or a fruit roll or, um, yeah, their favorite kind of, you know, dill pickle chips or just whatever it is. Something that like when they're dragging, I could be like, Hey, look at what we got here. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because it, it, it helps. It right. does. Yes, it does help. That is so, that is such a good tip too, because I think we want to, we're doing this healthy thing. We should just, let's make, make it all a hundred percent healthy <laughs> all the way across the board. And really kids need just a little motivation to keep going. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can make the healthy snack yummy, but it's just make sure you have something that's yummy because that's, yep. I, I don't know. I mean, 
when we go out with our friends, like we, we look forward to the treat, right? Yeah. And our, our kids are like us. They, they look forward to that too. So whatever that yumminess is in your family, just make sure you put some of that in your back, in somebody's backpack for the center of this hike. That's so good. I got to get better at that because I've been bringing like carrot sticks. And... I know. <laughs> a, a bin of veggies. Hey. Which is great. It's actually good when we're hot. Yeah, I know. Veggies yep. feel good. But I need to bring something good in <laughs> addition. Usually my kids are like rolling their eyes at the veggies and all the other kids eat them. Yes, that's there. true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like strawberries, you know, you could at least yeah. like do a fruit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I know you talked about going to a nature center as being something easy that you could start with. Are there some other easy ways for getting out in nature? Yes, I think um, even a park or your neighborhood are great places to go. One of the ways that you can make them feel more special and more like you're intentionally looking at the nature when you're out in those places that are more familiar is to get local field guides because those will show you the the trees and the butterflies and the bugs and the birds and the flowers that are in your neighborhood, in your park. And you can find those local field guides typically at nature centers in your area. Um, You can also sometimes sign them at your local library or even um, like a, a local bookstore will have some field guides that are, you know, to your specific area. And I think that really helps because once you start being able to identify the tree that you've passed, you know, 50 times and mm-hmm. suddenly, you know, the name of that tree, yeah. it matters more. It does. And, and it makes that walk around your neighborhood so much more important and special. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It so does I think feel getting like field this, guides is great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It does feel like once you can name a flower or a plant or a tree it feels like you have a relationship with that <laughs> that yeah that plant almost like that's mine I I know that I know right that plant. <laughs> right and I think yeah. that um once you have have sort of grown outside of the the park or the neighborhood walk or the mm-hmm. nature center you can look for something that's got a little more wildness to it there are nature preserves or you can mm-hmm. even um, if you feel like, well, I don't feel comfortable taking my kids out on a hike where, where you know, we might not have cell service or mm-hmm. we're far off of a trail, my kids are too young, you can look. There are amazing naturalists who lead classes for kids and parents, and they'll take you on a guided walk in an area that you might not feel comfortable going yourself and really give you the confidence to be able to mm-hmm. do that. Um, later on on your own yeah that is such a good reminder to utilize all the specialists out there all people yes. who love doing this as a job right I know yeah. our our local nature center has classes too mm-hmm. all summer all summer long for kids so right yeah. so great um, so if we're let's say we're already getting out in nature but we want a little more I mean I really liked your suggested or what you're doing which is building up endurance (laughs) that is what we need to do we need to build up endurance do you have anything else any other suggestions for people who are already doing a little nature but could do more well I think going to interesting places really that Mm -hmm. just ups the excitement level for everybody you might have to drive more than 10 minutes I'm sorry yeah Yeah. (laughs) probably true (laughs) um but we so our our nature group, we are pretty um, diehards about finding new spots. And so we're mm. always researching places that, that are near or far that sound amazing or look amazing. And we make a point of visiting at least one probably far off destination a quarter so that we um, we're taking the kids someplace new and experiencing new places. And that makes a huge difference. It's an effort and it requires some, some sort of sacrifice 
or maybe several different types of sacrifice. It's going to take time. It's going to take yeah, gas yep. money. Um, and it might be a long drive, but it, it's just like, it is so soul filling for yes. us to visit this place and see something new. And, mm-hmm. and, um, it just, it just makes us excited about nature all over again. That's so good. Oh my goodness. I'm so inspired. I, I know. <laughs> want to do that now. I think we need to up our game, Angela. All right. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Coming. We have we so do. many places we could be going. We I do. bet you do. We do. I see we a have nature live... 10 minutes outside your door. We do. Then... And we... And, uh, yes. Oh, and we live man. about two hours away from Lake Superior. Oh my goodness. We are so close. I mean, it seems so far away to us, Lake Superior, but we can do it. I mean, we yeah. can do that. Yeah, <laughs> you can. That's a day trip. Easy. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, we don't, we don't think about it like that, but I think we no. need to kind of change our, you know, our, our perspective on, um, you know, what, what's uh, possible, what's possible and what's really yep. worth it. It's, I think it's totally it's worth, worth it. it. It's worth it. Greta, just because I'm curious, do you spend like, usually is your nature group like a half a day or is it a full day or how much time do you usually spend going um, on your adventures? So if we're doing one that's nearby, um, that means like an hour or less, um, yeah. that will, we'll usually get there, um, by 11, we're supposed to be there by 10 30, but we're generally always late. So, yeah. um, the, <laughs> one of the greatest things about living in Southern California is you can always say, Oh, I ran into traffic, <laughs> <laughs> which is always true. It's so but, true. Yeah. Um, you don't, you just don't know what to expect. Sometimes, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a great excuse for being late. So we're generally, we generally start between 10 30, 11 and, mm-hmm. you know, on a short day, we'll leave for home by like two, um, mm-hmm. okay. on a long day, we would leave four. Um, so okay. it's a full day. Like we devote, most of us devote, like, it's just, that's our, our nature day. And we don't generally do much other school besides yeah. that. Yeah. That's good. That's so good. I and, am loving this. <laughs> <laughs> great. And do you do it once a week? Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Um, okay. And it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely not for everybody. There have been people that have joined our group and, and, you know, they just don't feel comfortable allotting a day, a full school day to being out in nature. Um, other people are not comfortable with the amount of driving we're willing to do. And so, um, and, and that's fine. Everybody needs to find the group that works for them. And, um, I totally encourage that. It's not going to be enjoyable and you're not going to do it if it's not the right fit. Right. And for sure. And you have to be honest with yourself because you could long for something. You're like, Oh, I want to do that. I want to be like them. But the thought of driving two and a half hours away right. for a high ache makes, gives you the hives, then it's not <laughs> the right fit for you. Even if you right. really want to be that person. Yep. And that's just what you guys said earlier. You have to be yeah. honest about who you really are. Yes. Yep. In every yes. aspect of homeschooling. Right. Definitely, right. You know, but this right. is just another example of that for sure. Yep. Well, Greta, do you have any other advice or wisdom or insight you'd like to leave us with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I do want to read another quote. Um, oh, yes. This one um this one's also by Richard Louvre. And, um, I think that it kind of goes along with what we were saying, like that it's worth the effort. So whatever that level of effort is that you're comfortable giving, it's worth it. And, and it might even be worth it for you to push yourself a little more. And, um, I think this quote sums it up so beautifully. He says, prize the natural spaces and shorelines most of all, because once they're gone, with rare exceptions, they're gone forever. In our mm-hmm. bones, we need the natural curves of hills, the scent of chaparral, the whisper of pines, the possibility of wildness. We require these patches of nature for our mental health and our spiritual resilience. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I love that because I think it's not just the the fact that, that nature... Um, can be gone as our world becomes more crowded and, and, you know, things get 
especially I've noticed it here in, in where I live, you know, the housing projects push out more into nature, mm-hmm. but our, our kids are going to be gone. And, and this is yeah. our yeah. time. This is our time yeah. with them yeah. that, that we need to, we need to utilize it. And honestly, I'm the most connected with my kids when we're outside at the tables, hiking in the woods. That's the time that we just, we're just together and we're learning and we're enjoying and we're at peace. And, and I, I want to hang on to that and, mm. and spend that time with them as much as I can. It is, it is a prize that I need to hold on to. Oh, so it good. is, it is such a prize. You're right. And we don't want to take it for granted. This is it. This is, right. This is our time. And I'm sure you're feeling it. Like I have a 13 year old and you have a 14 year old and yes. I'm just, the next few years are just going to fly by. Yes, they are. Yeah. They yeah. are. I mean, my kids talk about my two older boys. They'll talk about, you know, when, when they are done with our nature group and they start college or, or working they're, they talk about how they'll miss it. And they're mm. like, well, we're, we'll yeah. probably come back to visit oh. like some days so we can like, <laughs> like lead the hikes and stuff. And, and oh, I just, so sweet. Oh, I just think oh. that is fantastic. Yes. If they love it so much, they're already thinking that they don't want to let go of it. Yes. That is, that's all that I can ask for. Yep. Oh my goodness. Well done, Greta. Yeah. You're doing something right. <laughs> well, I think that I'm just, just um really enthusiastic about this yeah that's great it's, it's passing on I hope well, yeah. yeah yes and and like um Scott Sampson says in how to raise a wild child that is the fuel the fuel is our wonder mm-hmm. about the nature the natural world and if we can pass that along then that is we, we've done our job mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so well done. Um, yeah. So I know I was just going to suggest another piece of advice I would give is follow Greta on Instagram <laughs> because, <laughs> because you often story about your adventures um, with, you know, with your homeschool group. And it is, it is inspiring. It's so inspiring. It inspired us to start our group. Um, mm. And we are so happy we're doing it. We're so happy. It is a highlight for us for sure. Um, yep. And it's, and every time we see you doing that on Instagram and everything you're doing on Instagram, it is just, it's very inspiring. So we are very thankful for you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's amazing. I, I just, I think how incredible it is that we can be doing the thing that we were made to do and yep. that that can make, encourage other people to do the things that they are made to do. That's, that's oh. an incredible gift. For and sure. it makes me like social media. Yes, yeah, I know, right? Oh, yeah, There's so for many sure. Good things yeah, that can happen. So, are there any other places we can follow you, or maybe tell everybody about inst- your Instagram handle, and then anywhere else we can find you? Okay, so um, my website is gretaeskridge.com, and that's where I, like I said, I write um, more about homeschooling, mothering, um, and just topics that I'm passionate about. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is ma and pa modern. And, um, you can find me Greta Eskridge as well, but on Instagram, I'm ma and pa modern. And, um, I have a podcast. We're on summer hiatus right now, but our podcast is called at home. And, um, we, we talk about a lot of these subjects as well on our podcast. So, um, you can kind of find me all over. And uh, maybe I'll even come. I, I've just started doing speaking engagements. So maybe yes. I'll come speak yes. where you are sometime. That'd be super fun. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be great. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Greta. We loved having you on and we appreciate your time and hearing all of your good nuggets of advice and wisdom about nature. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for having me. Don't you just love Greta? I love her more now than ever. (laughs) I love her. Yeah. And And I want to go hiking with her and I want to have some coffee with her. Yeah. In real life. Greta should come to Minnesota. Yep. She should. In the summer. Yeah. We should set up a little, like a little talk for her or something. Yeah. Have a little live. And then, and then a hike. And then a hike. Yeah. (laughs) Old school hike. I love this. I love it. Yeah. (sighs) 
All right. Should we move on to loving this week? Let's do it. All right, Marin, what are you loving this week? Okay, I am loving a mug that I found at a local coffee shop. Well, it's not really local. It's Caribou Coffee. So yeah. it's a lot like Starbucks, but just Minnesotan. Yeah, and I, I, I would say it's better than Starbucks. You would. Wouldn't you? Mm. Well, I I don't know. I I... I think it is because I think mostly because I'm loyal to it because it's loyal because it's more of a local place. I love it. I absolutely love caribou coffee. Yeah. I mean, when I used to drink coffee, I haven't drank coffee in a long time, but when I used to go get like the fancy coffees. Oh yeah. Caribou was the best. Okay. And it's a chain, but it's kind of, I don't know if it's like a Midwest thing or what, but yeah. I think it is in the Midwest. But anyway, this cup was on the clearance table. And it I'm says, looking at it right now. Yep. And it, it says, says, say yes to adventure. Yeah. On the back. And then there's pictures, beautiful pictures of mountains on the front. Yeah. I and love so, it. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's so me. It's, um, it's nice and big too, <laughs> which I love. I like the, ha- okay. I yes. like the handle. Yep. Cause I like it's the handle too. It's rectangular shaped. Yeah. It's big enough for three fingers. I need that. Yeah. It's important. It's hard. it's surprisingly hard to find a good mug. Very surprisingly hard to find a good mug. And I'm be, I'm finding myself uh to be more and more picky about my mugs as I get older. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a good I'm, mug? Uh I have a couple good ones, yeah. Okay. I'm more and more picky about things, all things as I get older. Yeah, I know. Not just my mug. I know, I'm working on that because I don't want to be the the lady who's picky about everything. Yeah, right. But I'm getting there. <laughs> I have one other mug, though, I have to tell you, that I yeah. also absolutely love. And it it's not even from a store. It's from, uh, well, actually, it is. It's from a coffee shop store, I should say, in Austin, Texas, which okay. I go to Austin sometimes. My husband goes there a lot for work. And there's a coffee shop on South Congress Street, which is a big, um, kind of a touristy area. Yep. And it's called Joe's Coffee. They have the best mugs. Anybody in Austin, if you, you probably wouldn't go to this coffee shop because it's kind of a touristy place, but go there and just get their mug. It's amazing. It's my favorite mug. If I could get 10 of them, I would. So wait, it's the size or the it's, shape? Or? It's the size and the shape. It's, it's actually tall and skinny. Oh. And hmm. thick, a very thick mug. Um, I just love it. Yeah. So. Okay. Those, these, those are my top two mugs. <laughs> And if we I can find links for those, we'll put them in the show notes. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Angela, what are you loving this week? Okay. I'm loving a book. <laughs> I know yes. I come on here and talk about books and podcasts a lot, but you know, that's what I'm into right now. We love to hear so, it. Okay. So this is a reread for me and it's Ooh. called Peace Like a River. Okay. By Leaf. Okay. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name right. If it's Leaf or Leif. Okay. Ang- anger. Okay. I've read that I read this book uh I'm pretty sure it was eight years ago because mm. I remember where I was when I was reading it wow. because it was so impactful and I I didn't remember much about it except I really loved that book wow wow <laughs> I remember thinking I loved that book so much it was so powerful and I knew it's about Minnesota so oh, really this is a Minnesota author mm-hmm. yes and it's about the wind it's set in the winter Ooh. in Minnesota I know and so I could really connect in that way. But the writing is so good. Oh, it great. is such good writing. It's phenomenal. And I am loving it so much the second time. I think I'm loving it even more. Wow. And I got it because it was on Kindle sale. Somebody, you know, who promotes yeah. Kindle sales. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just checked and it's still on sale <gasps> for on Kindle for $1.33. Oh. So hopefully it will be when this podcast comes out. Yeah. Um, but if it's still on sale, you should get it because it is so good. The writing is amazing. And, um, what I'm learning though, is that I need to reread books more. Mm. This is probably my third or fourth reread kind of lately. And I've loved, I've loved it when I've done that. It's kind of nice because you know, it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good, but I also forgot what it was. Yes, you forget <laughs> forgot what, it's what about. it was about. But also, yeah, you're just you're guaranteed a good read, and you don't have to make all the effort of a new book, like trying to figure everything out. It's like right it's coming back to something familiar. Right, right, right. I mean, this is like kind of a 
it's not a there's a plot and I don't know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. I cannot remember what happens. So I am wow. really anxious for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. So I would recommend it. I think you'd like it, Marin. I am going if it's a dollar thirty three, I'm going to download it right now. Okay, good. For sure. All right. Very exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Um you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Homeschool Unrefined there. We also have a closed Facebook group we would love for you to join. It's called Unrefined Homeschoolers. Yes. Uh, yeah. We have some great conversations yep. in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lots We'd of support. Love to have you. Yeah. And then um, we have a website, homeschoolunrefined.com, where you can find links to everything that we talked about in our show notes. So we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Homeschool Unrefined was created by Marin Gorse and Angela Sizer. Thanks to Gambler's Daughter for providing the music for our show. You can find Gambler's Daughter at facebook.com slash gamblersdaughtermusic.